Okay, who you know fresh like me? Me, who you know dressed like me? Me, who you know grew up dead poor, no luck, came out like a damn G. Me, bullshit, I'm a dog jack. Yeah. Any beat, I'ma beat that blue black. Mindset good, so I never guess that. So close to the top, by the blow get back. Boom. I've been grinding all my life, man, I ain't stopped yet. Stop. Got more successful making music, not chasing them checks. Boom. Man, I'm 21, Jordan 8 up on my feet. Y'all yeah. gon' hate me, I can see. Yeah. Cuff your lady, I might take it straight up B. Yeah. Never met a motherfucker fresh like me, though. Fresh. Fish up an exit keto. Snap. If we talk about jewels, I'm Gleemo. I'm lit, man. Y'all can see though. Yeah. My homies got some problems. They be bugging cause they PO. Mm. Can't wait to take off and put cash down so they all be free, ho. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I'm so, I'm so lit. Uh, Andrew, welcome to the podcast, bro. Hey, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, no doubt, bro. So um, I found you from your song Turn Good off of Concrete Cowboy. Um, sure. I want to welcome you to the podcast. Let everybody know um where you're from and how it was growing up in your area. Where well, where well uh I'm from a small town called Hostel, Pennsylvania. It's right outside of State College, PA. So like in the Penn State area. Um, it was good growing up. I can't really complain. It's there's not there was no music scene. Like the only music scene that was happening was in State College, which is like 40, 40 minutes away. So I'm there. My cousin had a band, so that was, like, the only really people that were popping in the area. That was, like, years before me, so I was the only one. I pretty much started the sound where I'm at. There ain't many people popping close to me. Um, But, yeah, I mean, growing up, it was literally just me in my room playing. I played drums, guitar, bass, piano. Um, Didn't start rapping until I was, like, 15, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of it was just spent kicking it making music playing ball it was a decent i have fun bro no matter what if i even if i had dirt i made it work you know what i mean i I had a lot of fun yeah no that's dope so you being uh where you're at growing up there where is the biggest music scene near you pittsburgh right either pittsburgh yeah pittsburgh philly's further than pittsburgh yeah so talk about some of uh your influences musically Musically, like from the area, or just as a whole, like my influences. Uh, just as a whole, like who were you? Who were you hearing? Um, while you were growing up as a kid, like played in your house, and then what were you listening to when you got the aux cord? Shoot. So when I was growing up, my dad and my mom were both big grunge heads. Like I don't know if you're familiar with like the Alice in Chains and like that whole era. So like a lot of like Stone Temple Pilots and. God damn. Uh God damn, I can't think of nothing right now. I was a chance. So like a lot of um Audio Slave, Pool, Perfect Circle, Queens of the Stone Age. Um, like a lot of like like rock and metal bands. And then when I got the aux cord, it turned into like around 13, I found out about Lil Wayne and I started like really digging rap. And then it was like K Camp, Wayne, Drake. Ah, uh, god damn. Those were like those were like my mains back then, you know what I mean? Uh Walker Flock, obviously Gucci. And Wiz, obviously Wiz. Wiz was like my goat back when I was growing up, bro. You were if your your party wasn't shit unless you had Taylor Gang playing, you know what I mean? Or Mac Miller, yeah. Yeah, and Mac too, and Mac. No disrespect. That's all Mac. Like I got into Mac after Wiz and I talked to Germ about that and I was like, bro, like that shit wasn't, you didn't have a party unless one of those two were playing. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just the way it was. So those were a lot of my influences, but definitely like the first big one was definitely Wayne. Lil Wayne was like my everything. Still to this day, I think he's one of the greatest MCs to ever touch a mic. Oh no, I I fully agree. He's, he's still doing it just as good today as his whole career. Um, So you said you you were growing up, you know, playing um the drums, uh guitar, a bunch of instruments. What yeah. And you said you started you didn't think about rapping until you're about 15. Um Yeah. Talk about that. Like talk about the idea that it that came into your head like and then when did you put your idea into action and actually start making your own music? So I was probably about 14 when the idea was posed like because around that time between 14 and 15 i really started getting into Wayne, like i said so around that time i'm like you know because i was already playing so many instruments i'm like dude i why don't i just give that a shot but i never lyrically like 
that never crossed my mind. Like I never really did anything with my voice. I never really sang, never did nothing like that. So once like I really started digging into rap and really started peeling back layers and like peeping game and seeing lyricism and cadence and everything like that. Like I fell in love with it faster than I fell in love with any other instrument. And that really intrigued me. So like I knew enough after learning those instruments to know that like, there's something there, you know what I mean? Even though I didn't even write yet, I knew the way I loved it, that there could be something to come out of it. And that's honestly what pushed me in the direction of rapping. And then I remember telling my parents like, yo, I think I'm going to start rapping. I'm growing up in a household where they're buying me drum sets. I'm listening to like Slipknot and shit like that all day. They literally were so sideballed by it. They didn't know how to react. But like I said, I played all them instruments. They're like, okay, you know, next thing you know within like a year or two years i felt like i was just as solid on the mic as i was behind like the skins or with a pick in my hand on the guitar you know so i think that's how it really all started for me to be honest with you yeah and then so you go from that you tell your parents you know maybe you're gonna start making rap music um when did it become serious for you? Like, when did you like actually put your all into it and then, you know, think about dropping something publicly? Cause you can fuck around all you want, but like once, you know, once you drop something publicly, anybody you ever knew, anyone online can say whatever they want about it. So I grew up like in a rural area. So I started riding like four wheelers and stuff like that real young dirt bikes, stuff like that. Long story short around 16 so i already like started like testing the mic and like get my get my legs under me you know what i mean rap was i ended up getting into an accident on a quad and i broke my femur bro i was in a wheelchair for like seven months so i had nothing but time you know what i mean that christmas i ended up getting fl studio and all that shit I started really writing then, you know what I mean? I started like getting in the lab every single night and like locking myself in the room and really getting after it. I started posting little snippets of me rapping, you know what I mean? Like on the time. And I remember my first, one of my first videos, not one of my first, but like one of the first 10 ended up getting into a thousand views like organically. And I thought that was, it's a, such a small number, but I thought at the time I'm like, bro, like that was enough. I don't know what it was, to be honest with you. Now that we're talking about it, I don't even know how that clicked in my head, but I knew right then and there that that was the key to keep going. You know what I mean? Oh, no, I, I get that. Like, when you have no fan base, nothing, a thousand's a lot. Right, right. I was like, yeah. bro. like I've been there. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was, it was super. That was a really, really, really exciting time. Really exciting time. So... When when do you take it to the next level? Like like where you're at now. When when are you like consistently dropping, pushing? You know, you as a brand, the Concrete uh, Cowboy album. Like when do you when, come into who you are now? So probably around like eighteen, I started like doing like I actually had I had a project that got pulled, and only the real ones got this project because it was on CD, bro. If somebody has it hold on to that shit but it was uh nothing to something volume one because volume two i believe is out on dsps which i'm gonna pull some of them songs back and keep them for the vault but that tape came out around 18 years old and i went to this little this little event in miami there i met um steve lobel i met tony g he was part of g unit at the time i met like a couple cats out there and that's when i started taking it seriously like i, I had I was, like I said, like in that time that I was laid up from the Fuller accident, I had like a year there. And then the next year I just kept stacking songs while I, I went into the lab with like a plethora of fucking music and I had bangers, man. Like I went through like 50, 60, 70 songs and got the hot eight out of all of them. And the tape was just smoking at the time, like for the standards of what it was. And I remember yeah, like stepping in the studio around like 18, 19 is when it really started ticking because that that tape solidified it. Like even though my image wasn't all all there yet, like the the music spoke for itself. You feel what I'm saying? And that really pushed the way to like meet the people that I did like around tw like from 20, 21. I started like really meeting different cats. Like there's an old under underground cat called Dizzy Wright. He's yeah, still dope. Yeah, fire. 
But yeah, bro, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, well, more or less, not as much of a good friend as DJ Hop is. As DJ, mm-hmm. I've done like I opened up for him like three times, but I started like meeting people in that realm, and it that's really when it started to like the fire started to get lit. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And um, I always tell everyone this too, especially underground rappers. Um, you know, a lot of people drop online, or you know, just just there's a lot more that goes into it than just dropping music you know you got to get out there get your face out there like you and also it's really not what you know sometimes it's who you know yeah that's a big fact it's a big fact yeah Yeah, no um, no you're good no i was just saying like how many how many artists you've seen like that literally like posted maybe three songs and in three songs they're like Four hundred thousand views, five hundred thousand views. Next thing you know, they're signing a deal. Like that's absolutely true. It, it is who you know because nine times out of ten, them people that are popping off three or four songs have somebody in their pocket that's making them pop. You feel me? Yeah, or they're associated with someone who's already hot. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, um, who who would you say some of uh your influences are? Like the way you make hip hop. Like who would you say like? Like, who would you relate yourself to in the way you dropped your music down? Um, Definitely Mac, Wiz, Meek Mill. So like, how I draw up my music or how I make my music? How you make it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mac, Wiz, Meek Mill. Um, Man. That boy Harlow. Harlow's hard. Mm-hmm hugely because i started to get real melodic around like 21 22 like i really started expanding and um i would just sit there and listen to tape after tape after like a drake like drake was like a, i feel like for any artist like rap artist that's starting out he's like a really good staple you could pick game like his bars are tighter than tight and his melodies the way he laces his melodies and the way that he goes about spitting makes it so easy on the ears like that's a really good artist to sit and listen to and like learn from you know what i mean mm-hmm. but um definitely drake wayne obviously um man and k camp too k camp was another one cake i felt like cake like camp never got enough love bro like he was so dope when he was first starting out like all the yeah. bro, you know what i mean and i feel like he's another one like he knows how to lace a track. You know what I mean? Like there's just no other way around it, but definitely those artists that I named are some of the ones off the top of my head. Yeah. I like what you said about Drake too. Um, and, and talk about, um, you know, your perception from your career, because when I listened to your earlier stuff, you know, it's, it's focused on a lot of bars, like kind of hardcore. Yeah. And then, you know, you go to concrete cowboy now and you can see your versatility has grown. When, when did you think you had to make, make that shift? Definitely when I started getting into bigger studios, because I started like I've been in booths proving myself since I was 17. You know what I mean? Once the competition started like stepping up, I realized I had to step up and I knew like to be a rapper, you could either be a bar rapper, you could be a melody rapper. Right. I knew that I had a little bit of both, but I wasn't straightforward in either one of them if that makes sense like I wasn't I didn't have the best best bars and I didn't have the best best like voice or melody but both of them together I can make the best of that so yeah like definitely getting in them getting in different studios maybe like realize like I had to step it up because once I got into like ID labs and I started messing with um so that's my my fucking brother bro be with the heat um he was like he had that hit, um, a couple hits with Jimmy Wapo, rest in peace. Yeah, ID Lab is was- huge, especially out there in uh Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a staple, bro. It's a staple. Yeah, hundred percent. He was one of the ones that pushed me, bro. Cause he, I think, after the first session, I will never forget it. Like I literally spit a, like a verse. Our first session in, he cut the tape, and I thought I did something wrong. And he's like, I can already tell what type of artist you're gonna be. And then he went, boom, dude, and click the tape again. And then we re- we did ad-libs. We didn't even have to talk about what was coming next. Like we already knew. He pushed the hell out of me, bro. He pushed, like, that whole first tape, like Concrete Cowboy. That We got two more tapes coming out so far. That Concrete Cowboy was a big, 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 big push on B's part. Because I feel like he was just, like, 
really like pushing me forward and making sure like each bar was like perfect and each for even if I didn't hear it, he was like, no, go back in there. You know what I mean? Do this or do this this way. Like if it wasn't for him, that tape wouldn't have really flourished the way it did. Yeah, no doubt. Um, And yeah, I think um people like him, you know, people like Germ, yeah. those, I don't think those people, you know, me or you, like someone who, you know, loves hip hop, deep into hip hop, we we get it, you know, we understand. But I don't I think a lot of people don't understand how important these people are to artists' career, especially huge artists like Wiz, Mac in the early days. Like Back. these are the people that made them take it to the next step. Dude, for real. And they can a lot of the times like they'll know something, you they'll catch something that you might not pick up years later. Like like say like you they'll be like hey you need to change this bar and you might disagree with it right but you might do it just because you trust their input and for years bro you might not think that that was the right move until one day you hear it and you realize why it took off and it was because of that point you know what i'm saying like it's that that's what you said is definitely 100 percent true like it's crazy to it's crazy to a point and when i started getting in these bigger studios i started realizing stuff like this like i never i was learning as i i'm still learning as i go you feel me yeah so let's let's talk about Concrete Cowboy, right? Um, you dropped it this year. Um, yep. where, where'd you get the name from? And just talk about your, you know, your state of mind going into that tape. Yeah. So, um, Concrete Cowboy, the whole meaning behind it was so like I'm a I'm from like a rural area. There's a whole bunch of like hick hick motherfuckers around me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But uh, and I never, I always had a certain swag to me when I started doing like, even before the rapid stuff, I was always dressing in like nicer clothes and stuff that normally people weren't stepping in. You know what I mean? So that's where the whole cowboy part comes from. And the concrete parts double sided. Cause one, I was from the rural area and I was stepping on concrete in Philly, stepping on concrete in Pittsburgh, stepping on concrete, Miami, LA, you name it. You know what I mean? But also, I do concrete work. Like, I did bridge work for three years. I worked on bridges. I, um, I'm i working at a refractory right now to help, you know what I mean, fund a career. So I do concrete work. So it was kind of like a play on words on two sides, you know. But um, the state of mind, as far as the state of mind, I was fucking hungry, bro. Like, yeah, I, I don't think I was, and I don't think I still, like, have ever been this hungry in my life, like, once this opportunity sees itself, like, bro, I was there and I gave it all I had. And it shows like in some of these songs, like even the ones that are going to be coming next and the ones that are going to be coming after that, like they get, they increase in heat. Like I'm starting to hit levels and stuff that I've never, ever, not that I never thought I could do, but I never thought was feasible. You know what I mean? I always knew I was going to hit the top of my potential because it would, I wouldn't be able to sleep if I didn't, but I didn't know what that potential would be. You feel me? Yeah, no, that's a great answer. And um, I like watching your career, right? So ever since I found you and, you know, I went into your discography and everything. Um, if you just listen to your early shit to now, you can tell like always getting better. Like, it's yeah, not yeah, like one tape's good and then the next one's like off and then the next one's good. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like yeah. constantly getting better. And um, I just think that this album's great. You know what I mean? And I think, bro, I appreciate, I appreciate Yeah, no it. doubt, bro. And I think the next, I can't wait to hear the next two. I love that you say you have next, the next two coming. Uh, but that was yeah. gonna be my next question. Um, what can your fans expect or people that discover you through this expect next from you? So, uh, Lil Birdie told me an EP dropping this winter, <laughs> and uh, maybe, possibly, definitely, <laughs> an album after that. So next, this winter, this summer, or next summer's this winter coming up, next summer is gonna be on log. Um, definitely some live shows probably by next summer, and who knows, man? Like the way things are unfolding and the way stuff's unwrapping, like I don't. Only God knows, you know what I mean? But I know the sky's the limit right now, bro. Yeah, no doubt. Um, So I'll ask everybody who comes on the podcast this, no matter how famous they are, no matter how underground, um, yeah. who, who would three dream features be for you from any artist, any genre, dead or alive? Dead or alive. All right, give me a second to ponder this bad boy. Yeah, your, your three dream features. And not, not on like one song, just in general. Right, right, right. Um, dream features definitely. Shit. 
Wiz. Um, I think that one may happen eventually. He's yeah. He's, I think he's so. cool to work. He's cool to work with artists, especially from you know the PA area. Yeah, yeah, and like the way he brought up Fed too, bro. Fed to God's fire. Oh, bro. he was on the show. Yeah. Okay. Where? Yeah. Yeah. Fed, yeah. Like Fed solid dude. Like I never, I haven't met him face to face yet, but from what I hear, like he's like a solid person. You oh, know no, what I mean? He's, he's a great guy, bro. He he came on here right when he signed to Taylor Gain. Him and his management. He's he's no. a great guy, dude. He's a great guy. Yeah. Cool. That he's dude. Like I I'm a big fan, but definitely Wiz Drake. And Wayne, I, I I hate to like keep bringing up Wayne, but goddamn, that's he's like my reason I started. You feel me? Yeah, no, I think anyone my age, you know, a little older, a little younger, that's, you know, he's like he's like the Biggie Smalls, you know what I mean? Bro, for real, he's a, yeah, exactly. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, no, he he's the goat in this shit. Um, so where do where do you see your career a year from today? Shit, bro. definitely up you know what i mean i can't yeah. i can't i know enough about this world to know that i don't know you feel me yeah great answer so it's wherever wherever god puts me you feel me yeah no i like that um so <clears throat> just for you specifically what do you think you need most like if you could just name one or two things you know what do you think you need most to take it to uh, the next level definitely management Definitely. Well, yeah, definitely a label. Like I'm working on like getting an LLC and getting like already on my credit straight and like getting funding on my own because like at the time, like this stuff, like working with Taylor Gang and like all like working at ID Labs and like all this stuff wasn't even in the picture yet. So I was like already on the path. Like I've already had an LLC when I was 17. 18 like i'm mean, gonna I, I was already on the path of working to get an llc and then get business funding through that to fund the music so definitely like whether it be a like a label distribution or, deal i think would be good yeah. for you right so something along the lines like i need the fire's already started like the project's already springing off so i got the fire i just need gas for the fire which would be the funds you know what i mean and whichever way that would make sense for me would be the best move you feel me yeah, no, I, I agree completely. Um, Before we get out of here, bro, if you just want to let everybody yeah. know where they can find your music, if you could just spell out your artist name for them, and then if there's anything you want to say, the mic's yours. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, my name's Andrew Kepar, and D-R-E-W-K-E-P-H-A-R-T. You can find my music on all streaming services and DSPs right now. Concrete Cowboy just came out. My uh, last message is definitely peace, love, work hard, and make this world your bitch, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on the podcast. If there's anything, you, if there's anything you ever need from me, bro, just reach out and uh, for real, don't hesitate to reach out. We'll do whatever you need, uh, especially promotion wise. Uh, once you come on the podcast, your family, bro, we won't charge. Hey, bro, much appreciated, bro. Much love. Thank you very much. No doubt, bro. Stay safe, okay? Hey, you too. Be easy, right. bro. Peace.